And we are back. Pokemon Diamond, Hardcore Nuzlocke, the run continues here. Kicking this episode off, we have a first encounter at Valley Windworks. It is going to be the Weasel, the Sea Weasel here with its little floaties. Just a straight water type. Chuck the Pokeball and secure it. And now it is time for the highly anticipated Galactic Mars fight. The first commander here. She's got her infamous Perugly, the big old kitty. And because of our previous runs in Platinum and Pearl, I don't think this is going to be too difficult as we used Geodude to success in that Pearl run. So we send out Kurarugi. We have a little bit of difficulty against the Zubat. It gets a Toxic, but because there's only two Pokemon here, we don't have to worry about that too much. We one-shot it with the Rock Throw. Now the big kitty comes down. We eat a Scratch. No problem. Rock Smash does connect. For a third of the health there, we are ticking away. We are on the clock with the Toxic Poison, but as long as Geodude can hold on, get a little reprieve from the Orenberry there, and then a critical hit, Fadeaway Rock Smash onto the Massive Cat. Really good stuff. Not too many issues there. We beat Commander Mars without losing anybody, and now on to the next first encounter. And now for our Route 205 encounter, it is going to be the Pachirisu. I have never used this Pokemon. I am such a big fan of anything Pikachu, anything Pikachu clone related. I just really enjoy it. And we get this electric squirrel here. And I know its stats aren't the best, but it is absolutely adorable. And I love electric type Pokemon. So given all of that, I am about to swap out our Intimidate <laughs> Shinx just so we could use this little squirrel. And is it the best decision? No, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go. For our Eterna Forest encounter, it is going to be the Buneri. And we check the Pokeball and secure it. That leads us to Route 211, where we encounter the Metatite, Chuck the Pokeball, and add it to the PC. Metacham is a fantastic fighting psychic type, so I'm excited to use that later on in the run. For our Mount Cornet encounter, it is going to be the little Chingling, the little Wind Chime. Throw the Pokeball at it and secure it. All right, we've leveled up the team to level 22 to match Gardenia's level cap here, to match her Roserade. And um, yeah, I think this is going to be a nail biter. I am terrified of losing two, three, maybe even four Pokemon as Suzaku. The Golbat comes down to meet Cherubi where she is. So Suzaku fades away with a wing attack. I don't know if this is going to do a whole lot of damage here. And my goodness, it one shot the little Cherubi gone before she even knew it. And Golbat is just flying through this gym right now. Turtwig comes down and threatens with a potentially not very effective Razor Leaf. The wing attack comes down, and the starter, who has not evolved at this point in the game, is gone. The super effective damage proving to be too much for the cute little turtle, and that leads us to Roserade the Ace. My gosh, I don't know what we are going to do. Suzaku saving the other five team members by holding strong against Gardenia. Roserade eats the wing attack, and my gosh, holds on with two HP. Flexes with a heal from her Citrus Berry and responds with a not very effective Grass Knot for massive damage. 90, I mean 9 damage off the top. The Golbat eats it and comes in with another Wing Attack as Roserade is outside of heal range and Gardenia is no more. That fight... Whew, that could have gone so many different ways, but Suzaku just completely securing the victory over the second gym leader, and whew, I don't know about that, because if Golbat would have fell, who knows, we might have just wiped. Anyways, in all seriousness, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you on the flip. Peace.